Welcome back to Hardball. The state capital of Texas has become ground zero in the abortion debate. Today is day two of a special session of the Texas legislature where a bill is on the fast track that would make abortions illegal after 20 weeks, require abortion facilities to upgrade to ambulatory surgical centers, and require abortion clinic doctors to gain admitting privileges at a hospital within 30 miles. The net effect? The state of Texas would be left with just five clinics that could provide abortion services. Now, not surprisingly, Austin has become a magnet for politicians who oppose a woman's right to choose an abortion. Last night, former Arkansas governor and presidential candidate Mike Huckabee spoke out. No such thing as a life that is so insignificant, so worthless, so unwanted, so unnecessary that any of us would choose and believe that we are so godlike that we would singularly have the right to extinguish that which God created. Today, former Pennsylvania Senator and presidential candidate Rick Santorum announced via a press release from his PAC that he too will be in Austin on Thursday to show his support for the Texas abortion bill. And Texas isn't the only place the abortion rights fight is being fought. Last week, the North Carolina State Senate approved abortion restrictions that could leave the state with just one abortion clinic. Yesterday, in the state capitol, 64 people protesting the restrictions were arrested. In Wisconsin, Governor Scott Walker signed legislation legislation limiting abortion access in his state on Friday, but by last night a federal judge had granted a temporary restraining order on that law. This map shows the states where new abortion restrictions are being proposed, which in various ways would make it harder for a woman seeking an abortion to access one. Elise Hogue is president of NARAL Pro-Choice America. Sylvia Garcia is a Democratic state senator from Texas. Senator Garcia, let me begin with you. I don't get it. My reading of Roe versus Wade says, that the standard is set based on viability. At 20 weeks, we're not talking viability. It would seem that on its face, this bill would be unconstitutional. So why go through all the effort if that's, in fact, going to be the holding of a court someday? Well, we've actually been asking ourselves that same question here in, in Texas. I agree with you. I think on its face, uh, it appears that it would be unconstitutional. But ultimately, of course, it'll be up to the courts to decide. Uh, as, we, as you stated earlier, Wisconsin yesterday, of course, a federal court there has already uh, put an injunction on, on implementation of their, their actions. So I think the same thing will happen here in Texas. I think we're on a path to, to litigation in the courts, ultimately, with this, with this bill, if it passes. At least I mean, it seems to me you may as well say, well, one week after conception, we're going to ban all abortion because that would have the same constitutional standing as with the 20-week measure. Well, I, I actually think that that is the goal of these uh, radical ideologues who are driving this legislation and their politician friends in these state houses. I mean, their goal has remained the same. That's to outlaw abortion as well as limit other, women's other reproductive choices. Um, what's more interesting is the how they're resorting to do it. These politicians in Texas and North Carolina, and I'm from Texas <clears throat> as well, know that they don't have popular support on their side. And so they're resorting to cheating, changing the rules, doing these things under the dark of night because they know that there's a political price to pay. There's a health price to pay. There's a political price to pay. There's a financial price to pay when these things go to court. And yet they're so beholden to their extreme base that they're driving this out of step agenda anyway. Senator Garcia, to what do you attribute? the activity not only in the Lone Star State but in all those states that I referenced in introducing this conversation do you attribute it to a, a reading perhaps a misreading of what that Gosnell trial in my hometown of Philadelphia was all about well I think what to me it seems to be a sort of an agenda nationally by 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 you know, as was stated earlier, the, the radical right, the extremists who, who just want to make it harder and harder for women uh, to have access to reproductive health care, to have any kind of real access to, to health care generally. Uh, I think that it's part of a national agenda and they're trying to chip away. And, and I, I totally agree. I think it's just a back backdoor way to try to ban all abortions in this country. It, I'm wondering if there's a, a strategy that's now going to be employed by pro-choice 
these forces of getting women who've had abortions to tell their stories, almost in the same way that when people recognized individuals within their family or their social orbit who were homosexual or lesbian, all of a sudden it, it, it opened an awareness that people previously had not had. Elise, is that a strategy? I'm thinking in part uh, of an op-ed that I, I read in the New York Times over the weekend where a woman wrote very effectively about her mother having had an abortion. I mean, I think it's not so much a strategy as a reality. Look, women who have had abortions are our, daughter, our daughters, our mothers, our sisters, our friends. They're everywhere. It's one in three American women. And so we are all around. It's also important to recognize that we've got to take away the shame. The shame doesn't start and end with abortion, but it's very acute there. Women are shamed for exercising their reproductive rights. They're shamed when they're raped, as we saw in Steubenville. And this is part of an anti-woman agenda that wants to make us ashamed of being real women leading real lives today and I think women have had enough I think that's what we're seeing in Texas in North Carolina and all around this country we're getting calls from national members everywhere saying what can I do this is it this is enough we will support Texas we will support North Carolina but we will get these folks out of office who are driving these extreme policies that are bad for women bad for our families. Elise Hogue thank you very much State Senator Sylvia Garcia we appreciate your being here.